jealous fire All treasures of wisdom and things to be known Are hidden inside your head And in this fortune eternal events You've asked me to be your friend Ask me to be your friend And you, you are my birth You are my life You are my future And my hand And you, you are my birth You are my life You are my future And my hand Yeah everybody. Let's pray and we'll get going today. It's great to see everybody. Thank you for trudging out. Lord, thank you. We've come to worship and praise you this morning. Give you all glory. God, you are faithful and good. Lord, we just want to worship and praise the King of Kings. Holy Spirit, would you come into our midst? Lord, would you just speak to us as we worship, as we fellowship, as we hear from your word? We just want to be encouraged in your truth today. We praise you. We pray all of things in your name, Jesus. Amen. Amen.
Happy Boxing Day. Nice to see you all. Um, we're going to start off with a song called Here For You on your pieces of paper. You can go ahead and stand with me. <clears throat> Let our praise be your welcome. Let our songs be a sign that we are here for you. We are here for you. Let your breath come from heaven. Fill our hearts with your life. And we are here for you. We are here for you. To you our hearts are open. To you our hearts are open. Nothing here is hidden. You are our one desire. You alone are holy. Only you are worthy. God, let your fire fall down. Let our shout be your anthem and your renown fill the sky. We are here for you. We are here for you. And let your word move in power. Let what's dead come to life. We are here for you. We are here for you. To you our hearts are open. Nothing here is said and you are our one desire. You alone are holy, only you are worthy. God, let your fire fall down. We welcome you with praise. And we welcome you with praise. We welcome you with praise. Almighty God of love, be welcome in this place. We welcome you with praise. We welcome you with praise, Almighty God of love. Be welcome in this place. Let every heart adore, let every soul awake, Almighty God of love. Be welcome in this place. Sing to you our hearts. To you our hearts are open, nothing here is hidden, you are our one desire. You alone are holy, only you are worthy, God, let your fire fall down. All right, next we'll play... Or sing together, Jesus, keep me near the cross. <clears throat> Jesus, keep me near the cross. There a precious fountain, free to all the healing stream flows from Cal. His mountain near the cross, a trembling soul, love and mercy found me. There, the bright and morning star sheds its beams around me. Sing in the cross. 
In the cross, in the cross, be my glory ever, till my raptured soul shall find rest beyond the river. And near the cross, O Lamb of God, bring it scenes before me. Help me walk from day to day with its shadows o'er me. In the cross, in the cross, be my glory ever till my raptured soul shall find rest beyond the river. And near the cross I watch and wait Hoping, trusting ever Until I reach that golden strand Just beyond the river In the cross, in the cross Be my glory ever Till my raptured soul shall find rest beyond the river. Till my raptured soul shall find rest beyond the river. All right, we'll finish with rescue. You are the source of life and I can't be left behind and no one else will do and I will take hold of you cause I need you Jesus come to my rescue where else can I go there's no other name by which I am saved. Capture me with grace, I will follow you. My heart. And my heart is yours for life and I need your hand in mine and no one else will do I put my trust in you cause I need you Jesus Come to my rescue Where else can I go? There's no other name by which I am saved Capture me with grace And I need you, Jesus, to come to my rescue where else can I go? There's no other name by which I am saved. 
capture me with grace I will follow you And I will follow you I will follow you And I called You answered And you came to my rescue And I want to be where you are let's do it one more time and I call you answer and you came to our rescue and I want to be where you are Well, where can we go? Where can we run to to escape your incredible love, Lord? You're always so close to the near and dear to the brokenhearted, Lord. Thank you for finding us just as we are this morning, and we offer you our praise. Bless this time together, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, you guys can, kids can go downstairs. I'm pretty sure there's kids ministry this morning. And say hi to people. Blow them kisses, wave to them across the room. Good morning, everybody. Yes, everybody okay or tired from all the activities, possibly, or maybe not, but it's good to see everybody today. Sure, many are traveling or just resting at home, but we're happy that you made it. So, just a few announcements. Will be a quiet week. No midweek Wednesday evening prayer. But Bob, you ready to walk in the morning on Wednesday? Yeah, me too. So, if you want to do a prayer walk, it's usually me and Bob. You can join us on Wednesday at 10 a.m. Um, we should keep praying and so we'll do that Wednesday morning we'll be happy to see anyone who would like to to join us as we pray for our town and different requests that come to us you can be sure on Wednesday that somebody is probably praying for you we'd love to see you if you'd like some exercise and to walk other than that youth group junior youth young adults are taking a break and we'll be back in January so let's pray and we'll get into God's word this morning. Thank you, Jesus. We're here to worship you and praise you and learn from your word. Lord, maybe we just put aside the thoughts of yesterday or tomorrow. Just focus our hearts, our minds on you. Lord, it doesn't matter the day, Holy Spirit, we need to hear. Say, your sheep hear your voice and they follow you. They know you. And this morning we are your sheep and we need to be led. So even before we begin, we'll just have a, a moment of quiet. Just... Give thanks to the Lord in your heart and your mind. 
Just prepare yourself and ask the Holy Spirit to speak to you. Praise, praise you, Jesus. There's freedom. Freedom from anxiety, freedom from worry. There's freedom from fear in Jesus this morning. Lord, set us free as we look into your truth, as we know your love. Holy Spirit, the word just kept popping into my mind as we were praying. It's just there's freedom. Freedom in Jesus, freedom in your truth. Lord, we pray for our world that is just so afraid right now. Our world is so, so fearful. This is a battle beyond sickness or the economy. This is a spiritual battle, and we pray for freedom in your love. Holy Spirit, we pray that you would work. We pray this in your precious name. Amen. Okay. So, let's continue on with the little Christmas thoughts. And then uh, a couple of weeks, we'll go back to 1 Samuel. Doug will be with us next week, sharing. But this week, I thought we could look at... At a character of the Christmas story, and that would be Mary. So if you turn to Luke chapter 1, I don't know if you've ever read through the Gospel of Luke, but I will tell you, you're thinking after chapter 1, these are really long chapters. Is that just me, or is that anyone else? When, like, I'm in a reading plan, it's Luke 1, I'm like, shoo! 80 verses, just, man, that's a long chapter. I know I'm a little bit lazy, but anyways, um, there's a lot in there, and there's actually a lot, obviously, of Jesus, but of Mary, his mother. Now, Mary is the Greek, and I found this interesting, of the Hebrew Miriam. That's right. Just pointing to my Miriam because sometimes we think Miriam, we think some people say Hebrew, bitter, but the Greek equivalent is Mary. And what a joy to look at this amazing character this morning. There's three things I just wanted to point out about Mary. And by the way, there can be a lot of confusion about Mary. Um, she is the blessed among women. It says twice in Luke chapter 1, verse 27 and 42. Not blessed above women, <laughs> blessed among women. She was highly favored, obviously very righteous, very, very young, very humble, and very blessed. Tremendous, tremendous, just genuine, it seems, character of simplicity of faith in Mary. We start in Luke 1, and, and Luke starts, and he's quite an academic, and he's quite a man for detail. If you've read through the gospel, those chapters are long because he gives so much detail into to each story. Probably not as much dialogue. Matthew probably does more words of Jesus, but Luke really gets into the details of the story for us. And he starts with... John the Baptist's father, Zacharias. And we see that in verse 5 all the way through 25. And we'll meet his wife, Elizabeth, in a little bit. But he was a priest at the time. And it says clearly in Luke chapter 1 that Zacharias and his wife were both righteous before God. Verse 6, walking in all the commandments 
an ordinance of the Lord blameless. They had one problem, though, which was a big problem in that time, that Elizabeth was barren. They couldn't have children. It's not the same as now. It was almost, in, in a little bit, your identity, who you were to have children in that time. So it was very difficult. They had been praying, but obviously God hadn't answered at this point. So Zacharias, if you understand the priesthood at that time, it wasn't like the same priest serving in the temple all of the time. There was a rotation. At that time, I read there was probably well over 20,000 priests. So they would have different months they would go and serve, and they would do different things because there was so many. But some would go in and burn the incense into the temple there to the holy place and that was a symbol of praying and would happen and they would draw lots from the division of priests to who would have that opportunity to go in and it was extremely a high honor to be able to go in and burn that incense because you're thinking there's probably in your group a thousand you draw lots you go they would have never probably been in the holies now, obviously, only one, the high priest, went in the Holy of Holies, but just one every day would go, and they would draw and go in. So this was quite an honor. And as Zacharias, who obviously is holy and right and a really good fella, enters in, he has this incredible experience as people are praying, and he meets the angel Gabriel. And Gabriel says to him clearly, your prayer has been answered. Do not be afraid. Your wife, Elizabeth, will bear you a son, and you shall call his name John. And you'll have joy and gladness, and many will rejoice at his birth. Can you imagine there's something you've been praying for for years and years and years and years? Well, I know many people have seen angels, so that's probably crazy in itself. But then the angel would say, your prayer has been answered. Maybe he even forgot about that at that time. It had been so long, and sometimes we, we just pray so hard for so long, and it's not answered. And we wonder, God, where are you? And here God shows up to this priest, this one chosen to serve this people, this religious man. And how does he answer how shall I know this? <laughs> I'm an old man. Come on. It's just not going to happen. Are you serious? We're past that. Maybe in some ways he was thinking, or just simply, uh, there's no chance. And obviously he's rebuked by the angel because of his lack of faith, this religious man and gabriel says listen i stand in the presence of god and this is going to happen and because you didn't believe you're going to be mute and not able to speak now you say well maybe for some people that's a good thing <laughs> that they couldn't speak but for him just think about this for a minute he's been waiting so long praying so hard and when you know God's going to answer your prayer, wouldn't you be excited to shout out? He can't. He can't. But yet he has seen this, but his unbelief has taken some fruit from his life, the ability to praise. Well, I only told you that because Mary has a visit from the same angel and she has in probably for her a way greater miracle if we look at them you know like this is even crazier that this virgin mary this young girl who's betrothed to a man and we know his name was joseph in the house of david and she's young and this angel appears in verse 28 rejoice highly favored one that the lord is with you blessed are you among women and of course she's troubled with this saying because remember we talked her character is one of humility what me what not me she's not religious in terms of position she's not a priest 
She's a young, poor girl. And here the same angel visits with this great, like you're going to be with child. How can this be? Actually, the same response as Zacharias. But there was something much different in her response. The angel tells her, listen, nothing with God will be impossible. Like, Zacharias would be like, how's this going to be? But yet he was married, and the possibility of a child, even though it didn't happen, was there. Just think of Mary, like, what? How can this be? How can this truly be? I've never known a man. No, with God it will be possible. And there's something different about their response as we look a little deeper. Because Zacharias' heart was one of unbelief. But look at verse 45 and what it says about Mary. Even though she asked the same question, it says this. Blessed is she who believed, for there will be a fulfillment of those things which were told her from the Lord. You know, it's, it's okay to ask how, but in the heart, do you actually believe God can do what he says? I find it interesting because sometimes we measure spirituality on externals or behavior which is good we want to act right but the only reason i told you about zacharias was he was obeying the lord he looked externally the part he was the pastor he was the elder he was the spiritual leader at the time yet when it came down to can god do this he did not believe Mary, no resume. <laughs> Do you understand? Simplicity. Humble. Though asking the question, Scripture tells us, she believed. What about you this morning? Do we, do you have Mary's heart to believe that God can do the impossible. And whether you like it or not, we live in a culture that is very based on what we see and our intellect. And I'm not saying intellect is bad, but if it overrules faith, we have a problem. Because when God tells us something in his word, will we believe that he will do what he says. It can be simple things in your life, but do you trust and demonstrate simple faith that God can do the impossible? Or, how can this be? How can this be? You know what the world needs to see today is faith. More than anything, we need the fruit of faith. It is a tremendous witness to an unbelieving world who is taught that God does not exist. There is no, I found this when I argue people, you cannot out-argue people if they do not believe. It just does not work. You could have the best argument, but if their heart is set against it, it's not happening. But when they see faith, things change. What is Jesus truly pleased with? It says in Hebrews, faith. It's faith that pleases the Lord. It's a heart like Mary's to simply trust what God has told us in his word. 
don't want to spend all the time trying to explain this, but today as we look at God's Word, it is counterculture to what we are fed by the world's enemy through all different sources. God is different. Do you trust and believe Him this morning for what He says? Simple faith, that was an encouragement to me. Secondly, I don't know if you guys have ever watched a little bit of The Chosen, and I'm not recommending it as some great theological thing, but I do like the stories. I, like, I, I just enjoy the humanness of Jesus that they, they present in a little bit of a, a different way. And they had a Christmas special on, I don't know, a couple of weeks ago. And it was, it was really short, and I don't even remember so much of the story. We all know the story. But there's one line that just stuck with me when it was said, and they, and they played the story that Mary was sharing her story, the mother of Jesus, with Mary, of, uh, who had the seven demons cast out of her. That's just how they had spun it. And she just said, well, I didn't really tell anyone this, but Luke's starting to write these things down, so make sure he knows and it's all about Mary's song here, starting in verse 46. And the way they did it for me, just the first line just jumped out at me. And it simply says this, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit has rejoiced in God my Savior. I didn't even hear anything else. <laughs> in the rest of Mary's song in that moment. And of course, I've read it many times, but it just jumped out to me. She, she just passionately says, my soul magnifies the Lord. If you look at another translation of that, it might say, magnifies means to declare the greatness of God. And you might say, well, why wouldn't Mary do that? She's pregnant. It was the Holy Spirit. Like, this is crazy. But I would say to you, this is before John the Baptist is born. We note that happens in verse 59. So you might say, oh, here's Mary. She's experienced a miracle. Why wouldn't she declare the greatness of the Lord? Well, what do you think everybody was thinking of Mary at this time? Uh, let's think about it. You're a young lady, not quite married, you're pregnant, and people say to you, what's going on? And you use that old excuse. Well, the Lord, the Holy Spirit, that's why I'm pregnant. He just came and, okay, Mary, right. Does this ever happen before or after? Can you imagine a young girl going to her parents? Uh, I'm pregnant. Oh, at least you're getting married. Well, Joseph's not the father. Can you imagine Joseph? I guarantee you if he hadn't seen that dream, that vision where God said, listen, there's something going on that you don't know about. Well, actually, Scripture says he would divorce her quietly, right? And so though she's experienced and had faith in God that he would do this, it didn't mean that there wasn't tremendous pressure in what is happening to her and what the world would think of her. And sometimes when we have simple faith and believe the Lord, we praise him and we declare his greatness, but there is tremendous pressure of what we have to go through in faith for God. What does the world think? The world doesn't understand God. Well, even the Christian world, for those who have stepped out in faith, have experienced tremendous, oh, what should we say, questions? Even in little things that we trust the Lord for? Think back in your life when you've trusted him when it didn't make sense. What has been the response of your friends and the people around you? I've been through nothing like this, but... Just the little I've been through, sometimes saying to people, well, I feel God's asking me to do that. Really? Don't you know that doesn't make sense? Are you serious? 
Use your mind. Why would you do that? But I love Mary's response. In the midst of everything she's going through, she simply believes in her humility and her soul declares the greatness of the Lord and her spirit rejoices in God, her Savior. No matter what's going on in our lives, no matter if it's amazing and we're stepping out in faith, but yet very challenged, is that your heart this morning to simply magnify the Lord. Think of the word, like bring his greatness closer. I was just downstairs and Amy's doing Sunday school. She's like, I need a magnifying glass. I got to, because she's in Mary, this story too. And she wanted to teach the kids. We want to magnify like, like my readers here. I can't read this. Like it's just all black and googly gop. It needs to be magnified. Brought into focus. And that's what Mary's saying. I want to bring into focus the greatness. I want to bring it so it gets bigger to me. Is that our heart? To magnify the Lord in what he's asking us to do, in what he is doing in the midst of the challenges around us? To make his greatness declared. And our spirit is just soaring and rejoicing in God our Savior. I don't know. I just look at myself. And even in the midst of God working, I find something to complain about. God can be doing amazing things. I'm so tired. Oh, God's doing all this, but I'm really tired. You know, things can be happening, people can be growing, and someone gets mad at me, I'm like, I can't believe it. People are being discipled and changed, and one person gets upset, and I go home, and I'm like, boo-hoo. Yeah, that, that's us. That's not just me. Dare I say it's you too. That we have a tendency to focus on the difficult and the challenge instead of magnifying what God is truly doing this morning? Oh, I know my heart at times. Where is everybody this morning? I can't believe it. Why aren't they here? That's not the Lord. See, the Lord speaks of the greatness that we can gather and magnify his name. Is that our heart? Let's bring into focus the greatness of God and learn from the character of Mary. Oh, he is mighty. He's done great things for me. Holy is his name. His mercy is on those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He scattered the proud. Praise the Lord. He's exalted the humble. May that be our heart this morning. And finally, I don't know if you've ever read a little bit more about Mary. But as you go through this, she seems not to be a character who's ever in a rush. Mary. And... A couple of times, it's interesting, in chapter 2, verse 19, and I believe uh, in verse 51, as she's going through different things, and one of the things she went through is when the shepherds came, and they're like, we saw a bunch of angels, and it was crazy, and they came. She's, what? She's thinking, Joseph's about this. It says this in verse 18 of chapter 2. They marvel at those things which were told them by the shepherds. By the way, my wife's had nine children, and you're in the hospital, you have the room. Visitors are nice, but could you imagine, like, oh, <laughs> this group of shepherds. Hello! We're just over there. We saw this crazy thing. They marveled. In verse 19, I guess what I'm trying to point out, it says, Mary kept all these things 
and pondered them in her heart. Mary seems to one to ponder. That word kept preserved these things in her heart. She thought about them. She pondered. She went over them again and again. She didn't, like, go tell everybody, necessarily. She thought, God, what is this? What is this about? As you continue on in chapter 2, as I said in verse 51, as Jesus is older and they go to the temple, they've already seen Anna and Simeon. They return to Nazareth, had the dreams, gone here, done there. And he amazes the scholars. Do you remember that story? And he gets lost on the way home. And he has this crazy comment in verse 49 of chapter 2 of why he stayed in the temple. Why did you seek me? Did you not know that I must be about my father's business? They didn't understand the statement which he spoke to them. They're just trying to be parents. They've had all these things happen to them. They're trying to figure it out. And it says this in verse 51. His mother kept, kept all of these things in her heart. Pondered, chewed on, meditated. She didn't call somebody. She didn't text somebody. That's a joke. You can't believe what happened to me. She pondered. And I guess my thought this morning is often we're such busy people. And by the way, if this is Mary's character and you think, well, I don't know how busy, like she's got this character of pondering, but she probably wasn't that busy. You know she had many other children? You know she was probably a busy person, but yet her character is one to ponder what Jesus was, what he was doing. And for us, even though she was busy and we're busy and life is busy, this is an amazing encouragement. Do you ponder, chew on, meditate the greatness of Christ in your life? I find, again, I live in a world of distraction, starting with this thing here, right? I had an old mentor. It was an old lady I used to visit in the nursing home, and it was about TV. And I'm like, I think I'm going to get rid of my TV. It's such a distraction. She was like 80. She was in the nursing home in the bed. Her name was Mary Moffat. She's like, well, don't you know there's an off button? Oh, yeah. <laughs> no self-control. Maybe, don't you know there's an off button to the distraction in life so that you can ponder, just ponder, just keep the things of Christ and what he's done for you? Do you know what? It's crazy because if we think we're busy, we think we're more productive. And we get into this pattern where if we're not doing something, we don't know what to do, and we don't know how to sit still. I get there. It's just like, what's the next thing? What's the next thing? Who am I going to see next? What is it? You know, my house is busy. What's next? And then if I day or I don't have anything to do, I'm just like, oh, I have to go. Oh, give me a list. Give me something to do. No. We become a people that cannot sit and ponder. Maybe it's just me, but think of yourself. Some way do you correlate productivity and identity with busyness? The most productive thing you can do is simply, actually, spend time and ponder the greatness of God. It will fulfill you and change you. It will renew you. And Satan just wants, and I'm not only saying action is bad, absolutely not. The epistle of James says we have to be people of action. But not first. We need to be like Mary and just chew on the things of Christ and what he's done. And her character speaks to us 
And maybe, maybe, maybe that's how she had such a powerful, simple faith. Can I encourage you to slow down and enjoy Jesus? Funny, it's always a little bit of a challenge for me, but I'm always reminded to simply ponder the greatness of God. We, Christmas Eve and a couple of weeks ago, Amy and I did some Christmas memories on the midweek encouragement. And I said, one of the things we do is in our family, just the last three years, give these journals out and everyone writes a word of encouragement or something God wants to encourage each other with and we pass it around and Usually when we start, we're like, oh, it's going to take so long. Um, there's a lot of us. <laughs> so we're taking five minutes for each person. Woo! Um, but I just sat down and read mine. I'm never not encouraged after we're done to read the words that people have spoken to me. And again, I believe the Lord spoke to me through some of those. And one was just like, simply... Focus and spend time in God's presence. And it will empower you for what you need to do. I can live without my phone. I can turn it off. I don't need to read all the time. I don't need to have the TV on. I don't need to check social media. I don't need to be on the phone. I don't need to be with people all the time but i need to discipline myself and my mind and my heart to ponder and magnify the lord and i promise you it will change you this morning three things sometimes i go home and say what were the three lessons <laughs> my kids like i have no idea you were just like run on sentence dad Okay, so I make it a little clear, try and correct there. Tell me simple faith. What are you believing God for that He has spoken in His Word to you today? That's number one. So actually, let's just meditate on that. Let's ponder that. Let's just have a time of silence, and here's the question What are you simply believing God for that He showed you in His Word? word. Let's have a moment of quiet. And you ask the Lord as we apply. Simply believe what God has said. Secondly, my soul magnifies the Lord, just praising him in your spirit. Let's take a moment of silence just to ask God what you're praising him for and what in his character that you want focused or magnified for you today. Do you understand me? What is it about Jesus that you need magnified for your life today that you can praise him for? Let's ask him now. Lord Jesus, show us. You are so good, so gracious.
years ago, someone sent me a prophetic word via email two years ago when we did uh, Team 52. Someone was praying. They said, Pastor Dan, I have a word from you. It doesn't go to this church, just was a part of the team. And it simply said this, and I often read it and post it, put it in my office. It simply said this. I'm going to take care, paraphrase, I've got, I love your family. You don't need to worry. But secondly, I'm in charge of Northgate, and you don't need to worry. I've got this. Okay, they're right there, my first two worries in life. That wasn't the end of the prophetic word. You don't need to worry, but come close to me. Come to me. And I think that's the last point, Jesus. Whatever the first two are on your list, understand. God is saying, he is big enough to handle it. Come close to me. Whatever it is, whatever burden you're carrying this morning, he's saying, I have this. You come into me, my embrace, your first love. Come to me me. Come to me. Ponder him. Meditate on him. Be with him this morning. So Lord Jesus, we give you praise. I want to ponder your greatness as we take communion. Oh, there's nothing better to do then see and ponder, not out of routine, not because we have to. This morning, we get to celebrate and think on the Lord Jesus Christ and what he's done for us. David's going to come and sing. Caleb will pass out the elements. Ponder Jesus this morning. Hold them as we sing and worship and think on the Lord. And then we'll partake after we're done singing. By grace alone, somehow I stand Where even angels fear to tread Invited by redeeming love Before the throne of God above He pulls me close with nail-scarred hands into his everlasting arms. When condemnation grips my heart and Satan tempts me to despair, I hear the voice that scatters fear The great I am, the Lord is here Oh, praise the one who fights for me And shields my soul eternally And 
And boldly I approach your throne Blameless now I'm running home And by your blood I come Welcomed as your own Into the arms of majesty Behold the bright and risen sun More beauty than this world has known I'm face to face with love himself his perfect spotless righteousness a thousand years and a thousand tongues are not enough to sing his praise and boldly i approach your throne Blameless now I'm running home And by your blood I come Welcomed as your own Into the arms of majesty And by your blood I come Welcomed as your own Into the arms of majesty Instead of maybe having prayer at the end today, why don't we pray together? A little time of prayer and it will lead us into communion. How we can magnify and praise Jesus. So Lord, this morning, as a body, corporately, we want to just spend a couple minutes magnifying the Lord Jesus Christ. If you feel led this morning, I encourage you. What is it of Jesus that you want to pray out and thank him for?
Lord, we thank you for your body today. You came. You lived a perfect life. And in complete humility and obedience, you went to the cross. To take our sin, Lord, you were broken. You paid the price. We think on that this morning. Your great love. Show everyone as we ponder you that we are loved this morning. Let's take the bread together. Lord, we think of your blood, the forgiveness of sin. Now, just in that little section, 1 Corinthians 11, if there's anything that you need to confess to God, just search your heart now if there's any wicked way. Would you give it to him? Just your heart and his heart. Ask for forgiveness. Holy Spirit, would you just bring any dirt, any bad attitude? We give it to you, Lord. We confess our sins. Holy Spirit, bring your conviction. And Lord, may, may we now know the promise of 1 John 1, 9 as we confess our sins, that you are faithful and just to forgive us. Your blood justifies us, price paid, new covenant, you will remember our sin no more. They are paid and dealt with by the blood of Jesus Christ. Satan, your accusations, your shame, and your guilt are not welcome here. We are pure and right as we believe and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's take the juice together. Amen. Amen. You all have a great boxing day, whatever that means. Dave told me it's boxing stuff up. I don't know all those presents you don't want. Have a great day if you're visiting family. Be blessed. And this week, enjoy Jesus. We'll see you next week. Let the Lord's face shine upon you. Live in his grace. Have a great day.